Hitting record. Um, just in time for me to drink my Gatorade. Stay hydrated, everyone. Um, okay, so um, tonight, uh, DMs are playing with me. Um, Nick and Sebastian should have gotten the invites. Sebastian here? I don't see Sebastian. Um, I do not have, I didn't get a, an email um, from Aaron and Olivia. If you could shoot me whatever email you signed up for Roll20 with or go sign up for Roll20 with some email, then I can invite you to the game. Um, once you're, you're in the game, once you accept the invitation, um, like right now, let's see. I still only have one player, which is me. Um, so uh, Nick and Sebastian, if you could uh, accept that invite um, on Roll20, that'd be great. Or check your email. Um, let's see, Humble Bundle. Okay, um, so that we can get this going. Um, I actually, yeah, please just sign up. Um, because you have uh, some character sheet stuff to do once we get in. Um, and then tonight at 7, we're going to play. Okay? Um, so you, you should be able to just join the game on Roll20, and we'll have video and audio through Roll20. Um, last time I did this... Uh, one of us kept dropping. We didn't know why. Everybody else seemed fine. And he could only see, um, yeah, yeah. I figure we give it a shot. And um, if if, uh, if it doesn't work, we'll all join a, a channel on Discord, which is rock solid, right? Um, so that... Uh, um, I honestly, I don't know how to turn off audio and video on Roll Twenty, so let's let's start it there and go see what happens. Um, uh, after we're finished playing, uh, I'll send y'all a link to um, the adventure um, and my friend Ian, who who graciously set up all this Roll Twenty stuff. For, for me. Um, uh, what he's going to do is make you each an individual copy of the Roll20 adventure with your name on it and then make you a co-GM with him. Um, and then he will ignore it forever after. Uh, so then you will invite your players and we'll tomorrow um, we'll make groups uh, of players, in fact, uh, I'll uh, I'll make the groups probably after class sometime between five and seven, um, and put you each of you in charge of one of the groups, um, and then uh, people can join your your play group, um, and uh, you can figure out a time with them to play sometime before next Monday, because next Monday we're going to talk about this, right? And we're basically going to spoil the whole thing next Monday. Um, uh, so one of the things we're going to do is compare uh, what happened with everybody's groups, you know, uh, maybe somebody burns down the whole city, uh, whereas somebody else, everybody dies, right? Um, so uh, we're going to compare and see what happened through these stories. Um, so by next Monday, everybody should have played. That's the other thing. Um, DMs. Um, what I need from y'all is an email once you have played to say, these are the people who showed up and played with me. 
right? Um, and uh, for everybody else, uh, remember rule number two is don't be a jerk. Um, so part of D and D is um, it's cooperative storytelling, right? So um, there are lots of ways to be a jerk in D and D. Um, please don't be a jerk. Um, uh, participate, have fun. It's a game. Um, in the past, we have had people show up uh, and they are there in body, but not in spirit because the whole time uh, they're sitting there on their phone uh, texting or reading or whatever. Um, I would consider that being a jerk. I mean, it's, it's no, it's not like put your phones down, but uh, if you're, if you're delaying the game because you're paying more attention to your phone, um, then, uh, then the game, then you're being a jerk. So don't. Um, also, uh, there is nothing in the adventure. Um, I mean, there's, there's some violence because it's Dungeons and Dragons and there's swords and spells and stuff. Uh, but there, there is nothing in the adventure that should be more than PG 13. Um, so please don't get weird with each other. Um, yeah. Uh, um, you guys figure it out, but be adults about it. Um, uh, if, if anybody, is uncomfortable um please uh let your your dm know um if your dm is making you uncomfortable please let me know <laughs> um, uh there should be no reason uh to to talk about anything but you know uh rat people and and flying spells and you know silliness right um so that's D and D. Oh, also, um, I have a file of the basics of D and D. Um, this is given out free by Wizards of the Coast. Um, I will put that up in the Canvas file section. Uh, it it basically goes through the basics of the rules. Um, it's a PDF. Uh, and you can all, if you've never played D and D before, uh, give it a look. See, um, what's the matter, Eddie? I think the D. Uh, wait, when are the sessions for non DMs? Uh, you're going to figure that out uh, after tomorrow. And Nicholas, uh, with the two, back, two comments back. Nicholas had a question in order to set up the character. Oh, what? What? Uh, as a, for, in order for us to set up a character in the game, you need to create empty characters. Exactly, which is why I was waiting for y'all to to join the game, right? So I just invited you. Um, we're at like two, so I'm behind in all this. Uh, on Saturday, I said, "My God, I've been working um, <laughs> kind of nonstop, so I am going to take this whole day." and not do anything like like read the D&D &D adventure again or uh, set up Roll20. I'm just going to take the day off. Uh, and I took the day off, and I've been behind ever since. So <laughs> um, there's that. Um, uh, also, yeah, if you... It, so there are two types of players on at the table. Um, there are rules lawyers um, uh, who, who tell the DM exactly why they can do uh, what they want to do at all times um, and are, are somewhat um, annoying, let's say it. Um, and then uh, there are what I call rules attorneys, right? Um, <laughs> and I like rules attorneys because... I don't know every rule there is, right? There are big books of rules for this game. Um, I don't remember how, how to do everything. Um, so what I love is when somebody else is like, uh, uh, you know, 
I want to uh, jump and land on on the bad guy and wrestle him to the ground, right? And I'm like, okay, well, the jump check seems seems right to to hit him right, uh, and then it's grappling. Uh, uh, oh, I hate grappling. Um, okay, how do we do grappling in this edition, right? And um, that's uh, uh, if somebody can can say, oh, that's on page 138 of the player's handbook. Um, I'm all for it. Um, in general. Uh, the way I handle D and D um, is if I don't know a rule. Yes, we're playing fifth. Um, uh, yeah, I don't know if fifth has grappling. I just use grappling because that's I. I honestly I know that grappling is on page one thirty eight of uh, the three point five rule book. Um, so there you go. Um, but uh, if I don't know a rule and nobody else seems to know a rule, um, rather than um, stop while we all like go nuts um, and and look up the rule for ten minutes, I will just make something up, right? And I will say, okay, roll this. Uh, you need a fifteen. Um, and if in 10 minutes, when somebody's done looking up that rule, they say, oh, you totally did that wrong. I will say, okay, we'll do it right, the right way next time, but th the way we did it stands. Um, let's keep moving, right? I am perfectly open. I make mistakes all the time. Um, I, I will confess, uh, this is going to be the first time I run fifth edition as a DM. I've played fifth edition, uh, I don't know, four or five times at this point, um, but I've never run it before. I've played this adventure, but I haven't run this adventure before. Um, so we're, you know, might be a little rough. I don't know. I've been DMing since 1978. I think I can handle it, right? Um, I was 14 when I first was a dungeon master trying to convince uh, my, my skeptical friends to play this weird new game with me. Uh, okay. <sighs> that said, um, I got all the right clubs um, graded. Um, so there's that. Um, I got... Uh, all the character sheets graded. Uh, so there's that. I'm feeling on top of things, kind of, except for this whole D&D thing. I'm a little behind. Um, Karen, you got the quizzes done? All set there. Um, and you got your, your half of the character sheets, right? Yep. Okay. So uh, tonight, uh, the five-page story is due at midnight. Uh, DMs, please, please, please get it in before we start playing because I can't tell you how many times I've had DMs go, um, oh no, uh, uh, I, have to, I have to go home and finish this story. And I'm like, ah. Um, or can I have an extension on the story because I'm playing D&D with you tonight, Dean? Um, and that is called using me against myself. Uh, so don't do that. Uh, okay. Anything else? Anything else business-wise? Oh, um, once everybody gets in their games on Roll20, uh, this Friday, uh, so, so in Roll20, um, you uh, will we'll get a blank player sheet, okay? Um, uh, we will also share with you a Google Drive full of characters, full of pre-gen characters that are PDFs, right? Um, and I, I haven't written up this assignment, but it's a pretty easy assignment. It's, it's really not hard. Um, you're gonna 
pick one of the the characters from the PDFs. Um, all my DMs have already done this, um, and uh, that's going to be your character, right? Yay! Uh, I am a I don't know a, a half orc paladin. Some I, when I played it, I was the half orc paladin, um, and then. Uh, the thing is, on the software in Roll20, um, it's a blank uh, uh, template for the character. So what you have to do is take your PDF, um, print it out if you want, or put it on one half of the screen, however you want to do it, um, and you actually have to enter your, your numbers in the Roll20 character. Um, it's kind of tedious. It's not hard. Um, it's a matter. So number one, I will uh, post a video of how to enter characters in a character sheet. Sorry, DMs. I don't have that in time for us to play, uh, but you guys are, are smarter than the average bear. Um, so I, I figure you can figure it out. Um, if not, we'll go with what we got. Um, and uh, the cool thing is then when I say, I don't know, roll, roll to hit with your longsword, you just click on your longsword on your character sheet and it rolls the appropriate dice, right? And uh, yay, that's, that's really easy and, and fun and wonderful. Um, the good, so, so aside from the sheer mechanics of it, which, you know, we could do without, um, I'm more interested in you uh, doing a little reading, looking at every single power and what spells you have, if you have spells or what weapons you have or what skills you have, so that when we get there, you have a basic uh, familiarity with your character. Um, the other thing I'm gonna say, um, you're all gonna start at first level it, it it's a nobody's going to level up it's, this is a an adventure for first level characters right um so even at first level D, &D characters um can uh have a bunch of stuff they can do right um i've got three spells i could use a spell for this or i could use a spell for that that's that's wonderful um and the with especially with new players um the impetus the the kind of oh gee i have all these things i can do is to try and use all those things right um much of the time when you're playing D, &D um all you really need to do is say i walk over there <laughs> you know um, it, there, there are times when you know your create water spell is going to be perfect for for the situation at hand, but ninety percent of the time it's going to be absolutely useless, right? So um, maybe the sheets are second level. I forget. Uh, uh, probably second level. Um, again, I. I Ian, Ian gave me all these sheets too. So uh, I am less than familiar with all of them. Uh, so, um, so one of the things that happens, and this happens in lots of games, is what we call analysis paralysis, right? Where um, the DM says, what do you want to do, Johnny? Um, and Johnny says, uh, and stares at his sheet, right? Um, to find the absolute perfect thing that's just gonna do everything that that needs to be done. That does not exist, right? Um, sometimes you just you just need to walk to the right place. Sometimes. Uh, I'll just, I'll, I'll just whack it with my sword is perfect. Right. Um, so 
Um, in general, when you're playing, uh, do the it's it's great to be clever, um, but do the thing that seems like it needs to be done. If you're a fighter, fight, right? If you're a rogue, um, uh, sneak around. Um, if you're a, a, a cleric, heal people, right? Um, maybe call down fire, whatever. Um, <laughs> depends on what kind of cleric you are. Um, so uh, just, just, and don't sweat being the star, right? Um, everybody's going to get a chance to shine. Um, that's part of the DM's job and the writer of the, the adventure. Um, and we're going to talk about that when it comes time for you to write an adventure like this, uh, about how to give every kind of character a chance to be cool. Um, create water in enemies' lungs so they drown. Yeah. Yeah, it doesn't work that way. Um, <laughs> Destroy water, kill an enemy by dehydration. Uh, yeah, again, not not a thing that that spell works for. Um, uh, in fact, I, once I tried to um, create an ice wall. I had some ring of ice wall. And I was like, why can't I make the ice wall 10 feet above the bad guy and have it fall on him? Um, and uh of course in the description of the spell it says it has to be anchored somewhere um and you can't just create a wall floating in the 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 air above bad guys to crush them uh so guess what all your um your bright original ideas have probably been thought of before uh but maybe not who knows anchor it to a cloud is it but a cloud is it really there? I don't know. Um, okay. Uh, uh, also, um, next Monday is going to be the time when we all talk about our adventures. Um, so, uh, some of you might play on Wednesday and you'll, you will you'll get here on Thursday and you'll be like, Oh, this cool thing happened or that cool thing. Keep it to yourself because other people have not played yet. Okay. Um, I, I know it's going to be really exciting. It's fun. D and D is fun. Um, also, also, uh, some of you may hate D and D. That's okay. Um, there are, there are lots of people in the world who are like, yeah, no, that's just, I don't want to do that anymore. Um, uh, that's fine. Uh, my wife has seen me play D and D many, 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 many times. Um, and she has absolutely no desire to ever play it. Um, uh, she just, she's like, nah, not for me. Don't care. Uh, don't want to, don't want to do it. Um, but here's the thing as game developers, so much of, um, kind of modern action adventure, even turn-based strategy, even, um, uh, real-time strategy, um, and, and of course, role-playing computer games, they all uh, owe so much of their, their kind of thinking uh, to, to Dungeons and Dragons that the idea that you could get through four years of a college program um, without, uh, in, in game design or development um, without ever having played Dungeons and Dragons seems crazy to me. Hence, I made it a requirement. Um, so, um, uh, of course, not everybody has to take this course. Uh, just two-thirds of you, so to speak. Uh, okay. And it's only 25 minutes in. Um, 
so 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 uh didn't get to talk about tacoma last week wanted to talk about tacoma um tacoma's fun right um very different from uh uh 30 flights and gravity bone in that a there's dialogue people talk we had none of that in 30 flights um there are scenes right tacoma is so good yes um honestly before tacoma came out i had everybody um play gone home which is fulbright's first game um <laughs> please no spoil tough buddy you were supposed to have it played by last week <laughs> i'm not gonna i'm not gonna spoil gone home but uh gone home is there for although at this point gone home's like 10 years old um Go play Gone Home. It's by the same people. Um, technically, it's it's not quite as visually impressive, uh, but writing wise, it's it's actually amazing, right? So, uh, but they both do um, the the same kind of thing. They are, even though they're very different. Um, they both have the same kind of structure. Um, gone home, you come home uh, to a house that your family uh, has moved to. I'm, I'm, you learned this in the first five minutes. While you were uh, doing your, your junior year in Europe, right? You, you're doing your IQP in Europe. And while you're gone for the six months that you're gone, um, uh, your family moves to a new house, right? So uh, you have come home. Uh, nobody picked you up at the airport. Um, and you come home to this new house that you've never been in before. Um, and... Uh, it's a dark and stormy night and no one's home or at least it seems like no one's home. Where is everybody? And that's kind of the central mystery. Um, and it uses uh, um, haunted house tropes, right? It's, it's a dark and stormy night. It's an empty house. It's scary. Um, Tacoma uh we use the the abandoned space station as haunted house trope, which goes back mm. basically to Alien, right? Uh, Alien is the the movie where um, they they combine um, horror and science fiction, right? And you know we've had horror and science fiction before. Um, I suppose War of the Worlds, um, I don't know, is Godzilla horror? I don't, mm, it's uh, all those kaiju movies are. Uh, uh, I was scared as a kid of horror movies, but I loved all the Godzilla movies because watching big monsters smash cities was great. Mm. Uh, War of the Worlds, the I'm thinking like the 50s movie, um, uh, or even uh, if you if you want to talk about the Orson Welles radio play, Aaron, uh, it is terrifying. Um, the the Orson Welles radio play uh, about Martians uh, landing in New Jersey um, was one of the first. Um, fake news, uh, hoaxes, right? Um, and arguably one of the first um, alternate reality games, right? Um, where the big 
innovation there was that they they did a broadcast that that looked or that sounded like uh, an actual news broadcast or or many actual news broadcasts. Um, yes, it, it sent some people who tuned in late into a panic. Um, if you listen to it, they say um, that that this is, you know, Orson Welles Mercury Theater um, presents War of the Worlds by H.G. Wells. Yes, it would have gotten Dean fired. At the end, uh, he actually had to uh, come in as Orson Welles and say, um, uh, we hope you didn't scare, we hope we didn't scare you too much. In fact, I think the whole thing is on YouTube. Uh, let me see. Uh, War of the Worlds, uh, radio broadcast 1938, nope, War of the Worlds, I went too far, there we go, uh, War of the Worlds, let's go to the end, wait, wait, um, okay, let's see, let's see if I can share this, oh, this is fun, I've never done this one before. But perfect for um, share screen, share computer sound. Uh, okay, share. There we go. Let's go to the end here. For strolling on the green where the new spring last. This is Orson Welles, ladies and gentlemen. There we go. Out of character to assure you that the War of the Worlds has no further significance than as the holiday offering it was intended to be. The Mercury Theater's own radio version of dressing up in a sheet and jumping out of a bush and saying boo. Starting now, we couldn't soap all your windows and steal all your garden gates by tomorrow night, so we did the best next thing. We annihilated the world before your very ears and utterly destroyed the CBS. You will be relieved, I hope, to learn that we didn't mean it and that both institutions are still open for business. So goodbye, everybody, and remember, please, for the next day or so, the terrible lesson you learned tonight. That grinning, glowing, globular invader of your living room is an inhabitant of the pumpkin patch, and if your doorbell rings and nobody's there, that was no Martian. It's Halloween. Isn't that great? He, and he did that off the cuff. Um, that was no Martian. It's Halloween. Uh, but I mean, it, uh, it's a the Columbia Broadcasting System and its affiliated stations present Orson Welles and the Mercury Theater on the Air in The War of the Worlds by H.G. Wells. So they, they say at the beginning, it's very clearly uh, a radio play. Um, and if we go being watched closely by about their little affairs business was better the war scare was over anyway okay um so uh, a lot of words to say it's a work of fiction yes but but good words um that they're orson wells um so uh that was his disclaimer uh just like you're going to need a disclaimer on your alternate reality games um, so Tacoma, uh, did anyone notice, uh, as we were, um, docking, um, we got a scan of the station and it said, um, uh, zero life signs, uh, crew, uh, in fact, let me, let me go find that. Uh, 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 my videos my channel okay no i don't want part two i want part one uh, 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 tacoma part one okay uh hold on a sec uh, let me get to just share screen uh, 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 Tacoma Twitch stream, 
share computer sound and uh, let's Breathable air and Tacoma for a crew of one should be more than sufficient. It's critical audio visual information. Your identity. You're muted, Dean. Thank you. Uh, at the very beginning, uh, I can't seem to find it, but. Um, it said on one of the readouts, uh, crew evacuated. So it tells us at the very beginning um, that the crew has been evacuated, right? Um, so theoretically, we know that there's no one left on that station and that they the crew was all taken off. Um, there is a point... Um, well, so so what tropes, what science fiction tropes um, does Tacoma use? And uh, do, do we know what I mean by a trope? It's a common um, common building block. We've seen it in other stories um, and we have expectations for it. In fact, there's a site called tvtropes.com um that basically uh we have an evil space corporation we have an all-knowing ai we have a haywire ai uh okay so evil space corporation comes from uh aliens all the alien movies we have an alien uh, an evil space corporation um we have uh uh evil space corporations in um lots of video games right um doom had an evil space corporation the uac um going back that far uh we've got uh the the system shock uh games that have uh an evil space corporation uh wall -E has an evil space corporation yes you're right carrie um uh although this is Wally isn't particularly scary, although it's cer certainly a dystopia um, where we're all sitting in our recliners forever. Um, <laughs> um, the Haywire AI goes back to uh, 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 somebody name another thing. 2001. Exactly. How? In fact, um, there are there are glimpses of uh the hal 9000 uh here this is the famous scene let me show you that one share screen the hal 9000 share share Open the pod bay doors, please, Hal. Open the pod bay doors, please, Hal.
Hello, Hal, do you read me? Hello, Hal, do you read me? Do you read me, Hal? Do you read me, Hal? Hello, Hal, do you read me? Hello, Hal, do you read me? Do you read me, Hal? Affirmative, Dave. I read you. Open the pod bay doors, Hal. I'm sorry, Dave. I'm afraid I can't do that. What's the problem? I think you know what the problem is just as well as I do. What are you talking about, Hal? This mission is too important for me to allow you to jeopardize it. I don't know what you're talking about, Hal. I know that you and Frank were planning to disconnect me. <laughs> I'm afraid that's something I cannot allow to happen. Where the hell did you get that idea, Hal? Dave, although you took very thorough precautions in the pod against my hearing you, I could see your lips move. Hell? I'll go in through the emergency airlock. Without your space helmet, Dave, you're going to find that rather difficult. Hal, I won't argue with you anymore. Open the doors. Dave, this conversation can serve no purpose anymore. Goodbye. Hal? Al. 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 Very famous scene. <laughs> um, uh, so uh in 2001 we have this rogue ai hal hal 9000 um that takes up a good half the movie um the, the this expedition to jupiter um where hal um basically turns against his creators um also, uh, if you notice, Hal H A L is one letter off from I B M. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> um, so uh, it goes back to that. But if we look in the Alien movies, um, we have uh, um, Android in the original Alien. We have an android who turns against his creator. Um, there was a, a, a wonderful, uh, and I say that fully ironically, um, movie in the 70s called, I think it was Saturn 7 uh, with Farrah Fawcett. Let me see if I can find Sarah and Kirk Douglas. Um, let's see. Let's see if I can. Where the robot. Oh, oh. this is too, too wonderful to not share. Uh, share. Share. Okay. This is the robot stalking Farrah Fawcett from 1980. Come on, come on. There she is. No! 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 No!
Hector, put her down. Let her go. Conform. You see who that is? Hector. He'll do what you say. Alex, you ask him. Hector, please put me down. Okay. So we also have that one. And uh, just off the top of my head... um, Oh, I just had it. Oh. Um, uh, uncontrollable. Id. Uh, the monster from the id. Okay, here's an even earlier one. Where away? At the head of the Arroyo. Moving. This way, sir, slowly. 1956. Automatic control. This was some serious science Batman. fiction. Fight. Hold fire. You see anything out there, Doc? Nothing. It's an invisible monster that is... Okay, here we go. Here we go. Give it a blast! It takes invisible! Look at that! That's a cool monster. Okay. And in this one, um, uh, oh yeah, uh, uh, Blade Runner with uh, the the androids who have the replicants who have turned against their makers. Um, in this one, they are investigating a uh, a planet that has uh, uh, that is uninhabited, uh, but there's a giant machine, um, and I'm. I'm I'm going to spoil it, but you should all watch Forbidden Planet. Um, It turns out that the machine turned on its makers um, and and wiped out an entire civilization. Uh, But that doesn't tell you about the present action of what happens in Forbidden Planet starring Leslie Nielsen. So, um, So we have all these kind of back to the dawn of movie science fiction um, uh, of AIs running amok uh, of um, bad, I mean, it owes a lot to gravity, um, Tacoma does, where um, we've got a space station that's hit by meteors uh, and we have to get out. Um, we have to put together some routine, some, some plan to get us home. Um, it even has a cat right and the cat is straight out of alien um i would play the the cat scene from alien because it's great um but there is a point where sigourney weaver is home free she can get get out and she forgets the cat and she has to go back in to the alien infested uh spaceship in order to uh to to save the cat so why did they do this? Um, uh, either to make you falsely think, oh, it's an evil AI, or it would make sense for Venturis to make their AI sound robotic so they can discard them without people thinking about their humanity. Okay, so um, Fulbright Company is making you think it's one kind of story when it's really another kind of story. They're making you think this is a space horror story where an evil AI uh, or, or a malfunctioning AI turns on, on its crew uh, who are in the middle of a, um, 
a crisis and they can't depend on the evil corporation that sent them out there. Um, and the, the, the evil corporation isn't so much evil as um, uncaring, right? Uh, it's only at the end that we find out they're actively evil, right? That they need these people to die for uh, a PR stunt in order to get a law passed to make their space condos um, uh, profitable. Um, but uh, here's the wonderful thing. After giving you all those feelings, all those, oh my God, horrible things are going to happen, uh, they're all dead in their stasis chambers, right? Weren't you sure at the end uh, that they were all dead in their stasis chambers? Uh, is it uh, Outer Worlds? The um, uh, Yeah, well, it's got the evil corporation stuff. Uh, Outer Worlds has a lot more kind of, I don't know, uh, uh, details. Um, I'm not sure it's a better story. Oh, hey, look who's behind uh, Carrie there. Um, uh, Trip and Grace have, have graced us with their presence. So at the end, um, so we've built up all these kind of horrible feelings um, that this, these people are all doomed that all these bad things have happened and all the, the people that we've gotten to know and like um, are dead or, or dying. Um, and then it turns out okay. Right? Um, oh my God, it's, they got away. And, and I'm actually the good guy here to save Odin. I'm, oh my God. So um, there's a certain... I, it's not exactly catharsis. It's like reverse catharsis, right? If we go back to, to Aristotle and he says that um, we, uh-oh, uh-oh, right? Contentness is just a facade. Ha, ha, ha. Um, so uh, uh, Aristotle says we need tragedy in order to exercise our emotions and purge them. Now, whether that's actually true, I don't know. Uh, uh, I, I, I seem to recall reading at some point that um, you don't, there's no like biological need to uh, purge your emotions, right? Um, but uh, there is a certain amount of... Uh, 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 release when you you see a tragedy come come to the end, um, and we get the same sort of feeling, but um, the opposite when we're expecting tragedy and it all works out. Oh my God, everybody is yay! We win, right? Um, and they use that all these tropes against us, um, but in a good way, because at the end they kind of pull the rug out from under us and say, "No, everything turned out okay. It's it's okay. okay. Let's let's go on." Um, masterful writing. Uh, not just that everything turns out okay, because if we had a story where everything turns out okay. Um, it would be no big deal. Um, we, I, my wife and I watched a rom-com over the weekend. Uh, we watched the trailer and we were like, oh, he's going to end up with her instead of the woman he's dating. And uh, we called that from the trailer. And then, yeah, I know. Uh, um, the, and then it didn't work out that way. And we were like, huh, go figure. It, a rom-com actually surprised us? Uh, okay, so I will see DMs. Please, please, please e email me your um, your uh, um, emails that you signed up for Roll20 with. Uh, if you haven't already, I'll check right now. Uh, and I will see you at 7 on Roll20 or in the Discord. Okay.
Thanks, everybody.